Now that Damian Lillard has been traded and we, for the most part, understand what each team's roster is going to look like going into this upcoming NBA season, we've talked about how that impacts Miami, Milwaukee, Boston, all these different teams. But there's another team that was heavily impacted by the Damian Lillard situation and that ultimately did not land Damian Lillard. We have to talk about the consequences of that. And of course, that team is the Toronto Raptors. Now, initially, when the Dame situation happened and we all thought it was just going to be Miami, Toronto wasn't really involved in this. They've been involved in in past you know trade discussions with big time star players most notably they were heavily involved in potentially getting Kevin Durant when he requested a trade uh, from Brooklyn and then as we kind of got a little bit closer to when Dame actually did end up getting traded like a week prior to that Milwaukee and Toronto suddenly became teams that could get heavily involved now we now have come to find out that Dame never really expanded his list of teams to include Toronto he included Milwaukee as well as Brooklyn Brooklyn who didn't really seem all that close or according to their GM hadn't had any discussions on on a Damian Lillard trade, but Toronto apparently was close and there was a couple of different sticking points that didn't allow them to fully go all in and trade for Damian Lillard, but I think it's important to discuss maybe why they didn't do that and maybe what the consequences of them not trading for Dame are for Toronto and for their future. Now, reports suggest that the structure of the deal would have been pretty similar, like Portland still would have ended up with DeAndre Ayton, there still would have been role players going to Phoenix, all that different stuff, but if Toronto had been willing to include OG and Anobi uh, in the trade discussions, Damian Lillard might be a Toronto a Raptor today because Portland really valued OG. They think that he fits well within their timeline of these young players. They understand how valuable a wing defender and two-way player can be when you have a team that already has a couple of really good guards. They've got Shaden Sharp. They now have Aiton. They saw a situation where they could really round out their team by adding OG and Obi and of course some draft compensation from Toronto as well. And Toronto decided that they were not going to trade Scotty Barnes. They were not going to trade OG and Obi in exchange for Damian Lillard. So essentially their trade package was matching salaries and future first round picks because they wanted to try and add Dame to a group that included OG and Obi, Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam and of course Jakob Pertl as well and I was kind of making the argument at the time that if they were able to do that if they were able to add Damian Lillard without trading OG without trading Scotty Barnes that they could compete at the top of the Eastern Conference because Dame is exactly what they needed in terms of offensive firepower in terms of spacing obviously with with losing Fred Van Fleet this offseason that combination uh, of, of guys guys was really intriguing to me because they've got all these big wings. They've got a, a, a way to insulate Damian Lillard defensively. They've got another star in Pascal Siakam alongside Dame. And I can understand totally why Toronto wanted to do that. But ultimately, it came down to not wanting to include OG and Anobi in the deal. And it's important to think about this in the context and in the structure of recent trade discussions with Toronto, where they decided they didn't want to trade Scotty Barnes in exchange for Kevin Durant, uh, you know, over a year ago at this point. And in this case, they decided they didn't want to trade OG and Obi in exchange for Damian Lillard. And I personally am okay with either scenario there. I thought that the, the KD thing was totally reasonable. You're still Toronto. You're still a team that has to be concerned about whether players do or do not want to be there. And at that time, it seemed like they were still pretty far away from becoming a true title contender, even if you were to swap out, you know, uh, Scotty Barnes in exchange for Kevin Durant. And again, in this scenario, if you're trading away, you know, OG in exchange for Dame, that limits your ability, in my opinion, to really be at the top of the conference and you need to keep both of those guys. But it's interesting that this is a team that has flirted so much with the idea of adding another star without actually doing it because they value their young players so much. What it makes me wonder about is it makes me wonder about what the plan is in Toronto. What does the future look like? Because it seems like a team that, yes, is exploring a lot of different options, but maybe is a little bit unsure about what the direction is of their team. Because you would assume that if they were going to be involved in potentially trading for Kevin Durant and Damian Lillard, you trade for those guys because you want to try and win a title, but then they lose Fred Van Fleet and Free agency. And then if, if you're willing to, you know, keep OG and Obi and keep Scotty Barnes, then presumably that means you're going towards a bit of a youth movement, which of course tracks when you lose Fred Van Fleet. But then why are you trying to trade for Damian Lillard? Also, why haven't you extended OG and Obi? Also, why haven't you extended Pascal Siakam? Also, why did you trade for Jakob Pertl at the deadline if you're just going to go towards more of a youth movement? It feels like a team and a franchise that is constantly looking for value, a team and a franchise that's constantly looking for the best deals for themselves without actually getting a lot of stuff 
stuff done. And it, I, it seems like a team that maybe doesn't have a ton of direction at the moment. And honestly, that's not the end of the world when you have young talent the way that Toronto does. Uh, Siakam is in his prime, but Scotty Barnes, Noji, and Obi are two really good players to build around, especially if we continue to see growth from Barnes this season. But I'm starting to wonder if this is a situation that's conducive to allowing young players to grow. Because if they, you know, don't trade Siakam or if he just leaves in free agency, then you're losing a ton of value there. And without a true, you know, setup guard, Fred Van Fleet was one of the leaders in minutes last year in the league because they didn't have another guard and they needed him out there so desperately. And without that presence, is the offense going to function in any kind of a normal way with all those guys occupying kind of the same space on the floor? Uh, is that going to stunt the growth of Scotty Barnes? Or is it potentially going to be great for the growth of him? I just have a lot of questions about Toronto. And when you go back and just kind of trace the plot points here for the last couple of years, when you're looking at guys they've potentially been trading away or trading for, it's really difficult to figure out exactly what their plan is. And now in the wake of not landing Damian Lillard, what exactly is Toronto going to be this season? This is a team that wasn't one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference that quite frankly wasn't that good. They had a lot of issues in terms of, you know, Pascal Siakam potentially being unhappy. They fired Nick Nurse, who led them to a title a couple of years ago. Uh, Scotty Barnes did not take a, a leap the way that a lot of people thought that he would. He honestly kind of stagnated uh, last year. And OG Anobi is good, but are they going to look back at this and think, you know what, maybe had we traded for Dame or had we been willing to give up more future assets in exchange for Dame that uh, you know, the direction our franchise could be much, much more clear. And I say all that to say, basically, Toronto is a really interesting team for me, not only this season, but just in terms of what their plan is for the future, because they could do nothing. They could just bring back OG, bring back Siakam. They've got Barnes there. They could add another guard at some point. Maybe they're, you know, going to be a team that'll continue to look for stars down the road. They could do nothing and they can still be solid. Like they're not going to be terrible. They have enough young talent to still be a decent team. But right where they are, right in the middle is just a, a place that no team really wants to be and and that's why it was like oh they want to trade for KD they want to trade for Damian Lillard that makes a decent amount of sense why don't they just go ahead and make those moves and try and put themselves a little bit more towards the top of the conference and what it makes me think is there is still that hesitation from someone like Kevin Rand or someone like Damian Lillard even players that are on multiple year contracts there's still that hesitation to not want to play for the Raptors obviously they made the the, the huge trade a few years ago to trade for Kawhi led directly to a title and then Kawhi leaves after just one season. Those guys, even on multiple year deals, I think there is still some concern from Toronto about keeping those kinds of players happy. And if they're ever truly going to contend, it has to be because of guys that they've drafted, because of players that they've developed, because of value that they have found around the league, specifically in this case being Siakam, Barnes, and OG and Anobi. And that's just a really difficult model in which to build a championship contender in the current NBA, especially if you're a team like Toronto that unless there's some kind of injury issue is not going to be picking at the top of the draft anytime soon because as I mentioned earlier they are still a very good team and so I'm really going to be keeping an eye on what Toronto looks like this year if being you know semi-involved in the Lillard discussions has any kind of negative impact on someone like OG or someone like Scotty Barnes uh, if they're going to potentially look to trade Siakam at the deadline uh, what their new coach looks like this year or maybe Siakam ends up leaving in free agency next year which would be a huge disaster for them to go from losing Van Fleet one year to Siakam the next and I just I just have a lot of questions there's a a lot of questions and not a lot of answers in Toronto. Not necessarily that they're doing a bad job, but it just feels like a little bit of a lack of direction and maybe even they themselves are unclear on what exactly the future of the Raptors franchise looks like.